Well, uh, welcome to the Sports Editor. Really excited to chat to you. Thank you so much for your time because I know you guys are very, very busy, especially with the fact that rugby's up and running again. So thanks so much for joining us on the Sports Editor. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Ryan. It's good to be chatting to you. Thanks for having me. Welcome, man. You attended a, an incredible school in, in Polkham. Fantastic school. Great rugby culture there. Um, do you believe that, that the rugby success stems from the culture that's in the school? Yes, definitely. I think uh, Paul Jim has a massive uh, rugby tradition. I think it's also played a big role in my rugby so far, um, just to see at that level early on what it's going to be after school, uh, just experiencing that, having good coaches. I think played a massive role, definitely. Because you come from a small town called uh, Reitz, am I saying it right? In, in yeah. the Free State? <laughs> yes. yeah. So it's uh, what's called Reitz in the Free State. Also a very good school. Uh, played there till grade six before I went to Cape Town. And um, yeah, it was also a good building phase, but I think just getting more exposure uh, was good to move to, to Cape Town. Yeah, definitely. Because you guys have some fantastic derbies there when, when Paul Kim play Paul Boys. It's always a, a, a tough day. Um, but did you, did you yeah. also feel that like that competitiveness also makes you feel like, okay, this is almost a step just before we get into the likes of Super Rugby. Did you enjoy this, those yeah. derbies? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, inter schools is about 20,000 people, even more, uh, watching the game live. And that, sure. I mean, uh, that is a big uh, like a, a preparation for what it would be after school. So I think uh, the nerves would, was definitely there and to see how you perform under su such nerves as well. So, yeah, a very good experience. And, I mean, good people there at Paul Jim. So I really enjoyed my time there. They must recruit very, very well because, with all due respect, you guys don't have the, the biggest of numbers. But you've got quality, yeah. quality players. Um, was it quite a bit of attention to detail when it comes to the, the recruiting for the school? Is that why they're able to attract the, the likes of you to attend the school? Um, well, I think I think Paul Jim, their development is very good. Right. Uh, if you look at where they, the guys that are get in grade eight, they still use till grade twelve. They don't usually get too much new people in okay. uh, later on the years. So I think the coaching is very good. Uh, I mean, uh, Coach uh, Stamet. He's with the juniors there, working with them, and um, Coach Peter is so with the seniors where he also develops, um, and the coaching there is very good. So I think that's the key and the success for, for Paul Jim. And that is actually very good because uh, a guy who plays uh, C team, grade eight, might get, get a, a play A team in grade 12. So that's, mm. that's the things you want to the guys to be positive and start working hard and achieve their goals. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, you did very well in during your school career. You played, you played for province, played SA schools. Very, very successful time there in your school career. Um, was it a case where the more you were exposed to, the more you wanted to grow and take your opportunities more and more and more? Yes, definitely. I think when you get at that level and set up, I think you learn so much uh, being at that level and seeing, wow, okay, that's that's how it works, and uh, you. Just this easy to train, not hard, but train clever, uh, working on skill stuff. Uh, I think and that motivates you to see uh, improvement in your game by having good coaches, uh, doing the right drills, all that sort of stuff. So, Obviously, when you were young, you spent quite a bit of time exercising at home, getting in the gym, doing all those other things. Was it something that obviously has stayed with you and contributed to you being a successful rugby player at such a young age? Yes, I definitely I enjoy training. I think it's not like from a young age. Uh, my dad always helped me, my brother, uh, training with training and stuff like that. So when we go on holidays, we would train. But it was never like um, saying, oh, you know, you have to go train. But it was like excitement. Knowing mm -hmm. you're going to get better. Um, knowing what the end goal is. I think that is what my dad really helped me and my brother with is to, to like really enjoy training because uh, it's not – the longest training sessions, but it's effective. And um, yeah, we really enjoyed it. So yeah. Excellent. But then Mullah, you've obviously done well and you've been selected for South Africa Sevens. But what was like a deciding factor for you to say, actually, you know what, I'm going to give Sevens Rugby a go here. And you've, you've been very successful at the, at the game. So yeah, Ryan, I actually didn't uh, know I'm, I'm going to play Sevens after school. So grade 10, we were playing a Sevens tournament for uh, Provincial. I was playing for some province and uh, it was a pole gym, the tournament. And after the tournament, Coach Neil and Coach Shoes uh, actually came to me and just spoke to me about, about considering sevens after school. 
And after speaking to my parents and all that, I think I thought it would be would be a good idea just to develop my skills and just to uh, work on things before going to like 15s, uh, especially physically as well. Um, so yeah, then uh, after school, I went to sevens. Yeah, it was actually a great experience. The culture is amazing. I think you learn so much more just in rugby, just like mm. in, in life as well, yeah, uh, outside the field, how to to deal with stuff when you have injuries or when it goes well or even bad. So yeah, I think that really helped me with my career so far. No, ah, that's excellent. That's excellent. Um, because I mean, like you've been scoring trials for sevens. You had a really great twenty, really great twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen season. Did very well in America. Um, but how do you adjust from going playing sevens to like recently playing for the Sharks, then back to sevens again? How do you adjust and how do you handle all that? I would say work rate because I'm sure every, coaches also have a different expectation from you as well. Yeah, that's very true. I think uh, it's very difficult. I, mm. I don't know for other guys, but uh, for me, it was difficult to switch between the two because, uh, like you say, the training is a lot different. Where sevens is very high intense, fitness is very uh, tougher than um, than the 15s. Yeah. And as well with the game related, it's different t- type of rugby where sevens is a lot of space. Um, so where 15s, you have to sometimes just uh, take the ball up, uh, higher balls, catching balls, uh, especially I, I play wing at the moment. So catching higher balls. Um, yeah, it's a lot of different type of stuff. And the expectation of coaching is different where sevens would be... Um, Played into space with 15s is yeah, put the ball up first and then so there's a lot of different stuff. But yeah. I enjoy doing both. I think um, uh, I'd rather decide of I would prefer to do one of them. Uh, yeah, soon. No, that, that yeah, that does make sense. And um, in terms of positional play, you said that they've got you in the wing. Is that for the 15 men and for sevens? They just got you in the wing and for both formats. Yeah. Okay, so at the, at, the, at the sevens, I play between center and uh, wing, and uh, funny enough, at the 15s, I, this is the same. I play 13 and wing as well. So uh, I, I haven't specialized in one position. I think uh, speaking to the Sharks, um, might uh, look at 13 as well. So um, yeah, I, actually, I just enjoy playing rugby. So either position I play, I just go out there, enjoy myself. Um, so yeah. No, you can definitely see you enjoy your game because I think every time you got the ball in hand, something exciting happens. Something's about to happen. And I think you bring that dynamic to the game. So it's excellent. You must keep doing, doing that because I think you got quite an attacking mindset, but in a good way. You know, you want to convert tries or convert play into trials, I should say. So it's, it's excellent. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. But Mullah, with the game, uh, there's a negative side of rugby and sometimes injuries do happen. Um, how's your, your knee doing and when you do get an injury how do you um, keep that good form going uh, especially with a, a time like now when everyone wants to play but then again an injury happens how do you keep that good form going? No definitely injury is never, never nice to have because um, it takes a while to get back into it um, especially physically and um, getting your speed back and all that good type of stuff so um, yeah, of, 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 uh, this last few years, I had a few injuries. I think um, having my family, having a strong group of people around me helped me just to yeah. stay positive and um, get back um, as soon as possible. And I, I have to thank my dad as well, also with helping me with um, training and all that stuff while I'm injured. And uh, the coaches and um, conditioning coaches at the Sevens and the Sharks have been helping me so much. So, um, yeah, I think... Um, I've learned a lot through the injuries. I think I've learned to train more clever or uh, in, in a way that you can still perform on weekends, but still put in hard work in, in the week so uh, to to not get injured as well. So I think I've learned a lot to see where is my uh, weakness and in, in, in your physical so you can work on those things so you can have a longer um, uh, injury-free career. So, yeah. Excellent. Because... Going back to the sevens now, you guys train at a lovely institute called the Stellenbosch Academy of Sport. It's a lovely place. But also you play, now, you play for the Sharks in Durban. That's a tough toss-up between which place is better. Eh? 
<laughs> but you have to go for Cape Town. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Cape Town is, is very nice. It's stayed. My yeah. family's there, so I enjoy it. But I think Durban's weather is mm. very good, nice. Uh, the, the beaches are warm, so yeah. it's very nice. And both are very nice. <laughs> Difficult <laughs> to pick one. But yeah, um, yeah no, it's, uh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, oh, but that's that's why rugby is such an amazing thing. You can see all these different places, go around the world. Rugby, it's it's fantastic. It's it's really really good. And um, but now obviously 2020. Enough said about 2020. But one thing that was going to happen was the Olympic Games. Um, is it one of your ambitions to represent South Africa at the Olympic Games? Hopefully next year. Yes, definitely. I think um, my goal is definitely to have the privilege to, to play in the uh, Olympics. That would be a massive honour for me uh, to represent the, our country at the Olympics. So um, it would definitely be one of my goals. Uh, so we just hope that next year, uh, the season, we're not sure how it's going to go yet. But um, yeah, we're excited and we're working towards uh, the Olympics next year. No, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think it's it's great that you can be playing a bit of rugby that you are now because it just feels a bit more pre- preparation. Um, because I think a sad thing is that we're not playing in the rugby championship this year. But yeah, we want to be able to play in big competitions because, I mean, it's, we're South Africa. We're good at rugby. It's what we do. So it's, <laughs> we've got to be playing in <laughs> the competitions, man. It's going to be sad not to see the box uh, playing yeah. in the competition. But um, I think there's a plan into everything. Yes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So next year, hopefully... We'll get more bit of game time. Um, I think that's why I enjoy being at the Curry Cup at the moment. It's just getting game time and playing mm. rugby. So that's that's why we do the sport. Absolutely. Well, a hundred minute sprint. What is your time? Um, my best time on a hundred meters was uh, 10, 10, 6. Wow. That it was electronic. Um, yeah. Wow, you're quick. So you must be the fastest man in your team then. No, I wouldn't say that. I think it's it's my. <laughs> I wouldn't say it myself. I think there's a lot, a lot of things playing a role in uh, on on ground, uh, or grass on the pitch. We uh, on the Titan would be. Yeah. So uh, I won't. I, yeah, it's it's not easy to say who's the quickest on the grass and all that. But if if you had to have a race, like for example against Angela Davids, who would win? So we actually raced in school, the hundred meters oh. against each other. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, we had a few races. Again. Yeah, um, we are uh, one on the 100 meters uh, on the Tartan. But Angelo is a very explosive uh, guy. I think he's much quicker on the cross than he was on the Tartan. So I think that that helps him a lot on the fifth, uh, on the sevens. So um, on playing on the ground. Um, so, yeah. Uh, excellent. You know, and you mentioned earlier how important fitness is. Um, it's never, I don't think we always understand how difficult it is. Because, you know, we watch on TV and we see you guys with your hands on your head, breathing heavily, heavily. <laughs> is it those games where the stomach really burns and it's it's tough for seven minutes? It's harder than what it looks like. Is, it, is that true, Muller? <laughs> I think definitely um, uh, the start of the game is always the toughest. I think just okay. to get that first uh, breath, back uh, I think that after that it helps a bit but uh, when the hands are behind the, the head you you're really feeling it I think um, like you can't train um, enough to get that away some somewhere in the game you'll be uh, you're going to be tired and I think um, just to see how quickly you can recover after that maybe right. you had a massive long run to see how quick can you recover uh, mm. to get another run in like that so um, I think um, yeah fitness is thing that you have to work on when you're playing rugby. Um, so, yeah. Because I, I reckon that the Blitzbox are a fit squad. I mean, you guys, you fit. But there must also be one or two other teams that you've come up against where you look and say, look, some, these guys, they can play at high intensity for 14 minutes, even a bit of extra time as well, without even stressing. Have you come across a, a side like that? Yeah, definitely. I think... Um, in sevens, it's difficult because sometimes the ball can bounce more to the other side and then you have to yeah. defend more or something goes better for the other side and then now you suddenly going to uh, defend more, run more meters, then your team is getting uh, uh, tired quicker. So then uh, I think that's when uh, fitness comes in and like a mindset having like, even when you're tired, now you have, you have to work. So I felt it more at the sevens. 15s, it's um, you have more time to race because it's more stoppage. Mm. Um, but the way 7s, there's not a lot of stoppage, so you still have to go even when you're tired. 
Yeah. And, and which nation, because I want to ask you this in, in sevens and in 15, but let's start with sevens. Which nation do you really love coming up against? It must be those, those Fijians. They, they're proper, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan, you're correct. I think uh, it's my first game playing against Fiji was really goosebumps. Uh, okay. Standing in the tunnel, looking next to me, seeing, wow, these guys are really big. Okay. Um, so that was a good, like a great challenge. I mean, looking up how they played when I was young, I always said, yes, it would be awesome to play against them. So I think uh, South Africa and Fiji always have a great rivalry. Mm. Um, so yeah, I know it's definitely Fiji playing against them. is really a privilege and a massive challenge. Definitely, definitely. Going now, going to 15 men rugby, and we'll talk about local rugby. And you, you play for a great team, and the Sharks are doing great work. Sean Everett's a fantastic coach. Um, but I think the Blue Bulls are starting to build that nice aura that they have there, and they're getting more and more difficult uh, to play against. But it'd be nice to, you know, when you, like you said, you're growing up playing against some of these guys that you've seen on TV, and now you're in that actual competition. Is it, is it one of those sort of dream come true moments where you said, like, this is it, this is really happening. It must be a good feeling. Yeah, it's definitely a good feeling just to, to play with those guys. I mean, I look up like JP Peterson, who, who's here at the Sharks, a massive role model for me and uh, for a lot of guys, uh, just to look up at him and learn from him. I think um, you must never take that for granted and learn as much as you can mm. from those guys because they've been there, they've been playing the World Cup uh, many times and all of that at the big, biggest stages. So, um, yeah, it's a massive, massive privilege for me. And I just, um, for me, it's a goal is to, to soak up as much as I can from those guys and learn um, as much as I can. Absolutely. And one guy in your team is, is Van der Kock, and he's obviously a great a sevens legend. But it's an interesting one because you look at some chaps, um, who focused on sevens for a long time and they've played, you know, maybe until they were 35, 36, even 37. Um, do you think it's better to, you know, if you want to have a long sevens career to totally cut out 15s or are you going to try and eventually just focus on one and which one do you feel is probably going to bring the best out of your career? Yeah, so definitely, I think Ryan is like you said. You have to have to make a decision uh, mm. sooner or later at what which one you want to prefer and play because uh, the, the place where you're at, that's where you're gonna grow. So being in between the two, as I am now, it's quite difficult to mm -hmm. specialize. And uh, I think uh, for me, 15s is always gonna be um, I prefer um, a career just to go there and play. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I've, I've, I'm joining the sevens at the moment. So just learning from them and then definitely I'll make uh, a transition to the 15s and um, yeah, to pursue my career there as well. No, excellent, excellent. And, and it, it seems like it's going to be quite an exciting thing regarding, you know, next, next year, the Pro 14. And I think that's why it's also nice to play 15 man rugby. You get to play in a, a jolly good competition. I believe the Pro 14 is a, a good competition. It's sad that Super Rugby is not going to really be happening anymore. Um, is, that, is that something that you would also really want to experience as Pro 14 playing in that competition? Well, firstly, I think it is sad to see Super Rugby going mm -hmm. away. I think uh, it's been there for so long and it has such good memories growing up to watching the Super Rugby. I think it's a new, new um, time as well and new opportunities. I think it's going to be good for the guys to um, play against uh, uh, in the Pro 14 or be probably Pro 16 then. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think everyone is excited and, um, yeah, I think uh, I'd love to play in that, in that um, tournament and, um, yeah, just to see how the guys actually play against those, uh, those, those teams because it's going to be a lot different than uh, the New Zealand and Australian teams in Argentina because uh, I think it's going to be a bit more wet, uh, slower game. Um, so, a lot more like, uh, I think, Test Rapid. So, I think it's going to be a good challenge this year how oh, we yes. uh, yeah, perform. Absolutely. No, it'll be brilliant. But um, just looking at rugby, generally speaking, in a nutshell, um, do you, how much good has rugby been for you personally? Do you really feel it's made you the person that you are now? Yeah, definitely. I think I always say to myself, I never... Um, I uh, value myself as a rugby player because I'm, that's part of my life. It's not my life. I think when you realize, I've, I've realized that as, uh, after school because uh, rugby has a lot of ups and downs. So you, you have to have other stuff 
in your life that keeps you strong. Uh, mm. But I think rugby has done a lot for me. I've made so much friends. I've learned so much and I've seen a lot of places overseas with the servants. Um, I think, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying rugby. I enjoy what I'm doing. So I think that's a blessing to, to do what you love uh, every day. So I've never woke up and said, geez, this is going to be a, like a tough day while I have to go train. It's always going to be it's always fun for me just to go train and uh, to go learn every day. So it's really a blessing. Yeah. You know, because one thing, and I'm generalizing in rugby now, one thing I believe they get right is just the rugby community. And I'm talking about the world community. Everyone in rugby seems to want to help each other. And I know when you're on the field, it's, it's different. You want to win. But it just seems like the general rugby aura is that we want to help each other and grow the game. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You obviously might have experienced Yes, definitely. No, definitely. I think so too because if you look at in South Africa where, where we play, even now already they are looking for us to see what we're going to do life after rugby. So sure. getting us into um, to educate, uh, mm. to build up a context, um, I think that's, that's what rugby brings. I think it's a, like a brotherhood. Even yes. if we play against each other, it's like you say, on the field it's different, but off the the game it's like a brotherhood and i think that is what makes rugby so special uh just having that mutual respect uh, between each other uh, i think that is that's what makes rugby really um yeah it makes it special and and if you weren't playing rugby what would you be doing i think i would still be into sport uh maybe as a coaching and or uh, okay. um, uh, yeah, I like coaching, especially with conditioning and stuff like that. So right. I, that's what my dad has been doing. And I enjoy doing business. So um, my brother is actually into business a lot. So yeah, I always learn, learn from him. I think that's a passion of mine as well. And your brother probably would, would disagree, but you're probably the better rugby player, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely not say that. <laughs> no, no, really. I think my, my brother is really... He's, uh, he's talented. I think we, yeah. we definitely the uh, two different type of players. Um, I really looked up to him from a young age. Uh, just seeing how he trained um, and how he played, I think it's really been a great role model for me. And I think he set like the, the way for me to see what is what is coming up, like uh, all his um, experiences that I've learned from him. Um, mm. That rap is not always going to be good. There's going to be ups and downs to be prepared for that as well. So... Um, yeah, I've learned a lot from him. No, that's excellent. That's really, really good. Do you get time to go and watch Paul Jim play once in a while or is your schedule too too hectic? Yeah, when I'm at the Sevens, I actually make time for that. I really enjoy just to watch the school rugby. Uh, well, I'm at the Sharks, a bit difficult. Um, just the flights are a bit expensive. <laughs> so I don't okay. go visit a lot at home. Yeah. And um, have you tried a bit of surfing in Durban? I actually did try once. It was last year. Me and my friend went, and he's a prop. So I, I thought, listen, I'm going to show this guy. <laughs> I'm going to show him how, how it's done. So then both of us never served before. His first try, he got it right. I was like, no ways. Yo. So I'm going to probably get it right as well. That whole day, I didn't get it right. Eh? <laughs> I'm quite embarrassed. <laughs> but at least you can't say that water's up, then you freeze like he has in Cape Town. So that's nice. <laughs> so that's really, really yeah, nice. yeah, that's true. So I, now I just swim, I don't surf. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And Willa, do you get a bit of time to, like, tell us one of your hobbies. Do you, do you play a bit of golf? How do you, how do you relax? Um, actually, yeah, golf is definitely one of my hobbies that I, I, I wouldn't say I'm good at it, but I really enjoy it. Mm. And I'm starting to learn, so hopefully I'll get be- better soon. But yeah, I really enjoy just to be outdoors. I really uh, also enjoy fishing. So yeah. fishing is uh, one of them. Yeah, I don't know how you guys have the patience for fishing. So they're the whole day and you might not think anything. I, I don't know how you do it. But well done. I don't know. No, yeah. No, but you must go to the place with a fish bite there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that helps, doesn't it? <laughs> no, David. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 my dad also told me once this thing. He said, when I have a boy one day, if I have a boy, I said, never take your son fishing where the fish don't bite because you're going to take that hobby away from him immediately. No, so always take Take someone where the fish is uh, going to be active. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you because I just want to jump on there with it. And that, that's what I believe in coaching is so important because talking about that, you've got to do it where, the, like I'm just talking from a school perspective, make it interesting where the children want to play rugby because you make it like something to nibble on, like some, oh, this is exciting, this is exciting. And that's how I think exactly. about a rugby program. 
I think that's jolly important. Yeah. Good, a good thing to use uh, for coaches, I think. You know, make it exciting. Make the children want to jump on that rugby ball and play. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what my dad actually did. It's like, always when we train, there's a, it gives us a reason and the benefit of that exercise. And then you're like, oh, okay, I want that. Mm. And then you do it. Not, not like punishment. It's like you're enjoying it. I think exactly like that. So if the coach can do that at yeah. school, educate the people why are they doing the exercises, then it'll be much uh, more pleasant to do it. No, it's true. It's it's very true. Yeah, it's almost like a more of an understanding needs to be brought into it. But it's it's good. It's good. It's very very good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you follow the Six Nations at all? Six Nations rugby? Um, not no, not really. Uh, uh, all right. Um, but if. If it's on TV, I'll watch it. I enjoy any type of rap. Yeah, so. It's for your biggest place and then watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm staying in the stadium, so we're not really allowed to bri, but sometimes we uh, we sneak a bri in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> are they quite, bri. Are they quite <laughs> strict in what you eat? Um, you know, are you allowed to have meat <laughs> once in a while or are they quite strict in what you, you intake? Um, not really so strict. I think... Uh, you, it's on you yourself. You have okay. to. Uh, we have like people you know, educating us on what to eat, what's good, what's bad. But I think eating eating good is expensive, so not mm. all the guys d- do it. So, uh, but yeah, I think for me, it's a massive massive part of part of rap is to eat well. Yes. Uh, yeah, it helps a lot in your performance. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Nah, yeah. that's cool. Well, Mula, that that's been really nice to chat to you. Um, I think you've you've got an exciting career ahead, um, and yeah, we've got to take the good with the bad. So hopefully, um, everything's going to plan out for you, and we hope to see you on the, the field again soon. And that's going to be a busy schedule. Um, but yeah, man, can't wait to see you up and running again, and wearing the green and gold and dominating. Thanks, Ryan. Really appreciate your time, and uh, yeah, have an awesome weekend for you. Yeah, no, lucky man. Good luck yeah. with the other conversations. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, eh? <laughs> but yeah, yeah like man. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. I'll right. call you JJ now. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> That's fine. Cheers, yeah. bye. Bye, bye, bye.